Rizal just got the best news. He got his dream job at one of the top engineering companies in America. We waited three years for it and we're so excited. As a computer scientist with a PhD, I left my job at one of the most prestigious universities in the country so we can start American Dream. So my husband, myself, my two young kids, my son Abrar, my daughter Nadra, we jump on an airplane and fly from Malaysia all the way to California. <laughs> and as I'm walking out of the Los Angeles airport, I noticed I'm different. In Malaysia, wearing this, the hijab, or the head covering as part of my Muslim identity, is a common thing. Here in California, I'm the odd one out. You can literally spot me from a mile away with my colorful hijab. <laughs> from a majority, I instantly become a minority. And that caused a sense of insecurity within me. Do I fit in? Do I belong? As we're setting down on your new home and living American dream, someone knocks at the door. Knock, knock. Mommy, someone's at the door, Nadra says. So we go to our front door and open it. But there's no one there. Weird, I'm pretty sure someone knocks at the door. Then we look down, right on our doorstep. There's a green plastic bag filled with stuff. At first I'm like, what is that? And then, oh my God, is that what I think it is? So I crunch down, untie the knot, and open it. And the smell was awful. And I'm thinking, who would do such a thing, right? So I go out. I look to my right. I look to my left. There are eight doors in our apartment block. And ours are the only one with a bag of dog waste on our doorstep. Then, in a soft little voice from behind me, Nadra says, Mommy, why are they doing this to us? I completely lost it. I broke down and cried, and I say, God, what did we do wrong? So I call out my best friend. She's been living in America longer than I have. I say, hey, someone had literally thrown a bag of dog waste on our doorstep. And she says, oh, that's normal. <laughs> I'm like, what? How can that be normal? So I do some research and I found out that the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or the FBI, states that in 2019, 55.8% of hate crime were motivated by race, ethnicity, and ancestral bias. And the Department of Justice of California, where I live, states that in one year alone, from 2019 to 2020, the hate crime increased by 31%. In other words, one, out of three people from Marge's community are likely to be exposed to social adversity and discrimination just because of how they look and what they choose to believe in. So what am I going to do? How can I overcome this social adversity? How can I be accepted while still staying true to my principles, values, and heritage? To find my answers, I talked with several members of the community and I found out that these are real fears and concerns. Some community members choose not to associate themselves from being known as a Muslim. Some mothers would tell their daughters not to wear the hijab. Completely valid point of view because who want to expose their mothers, sisters, daughters, and loved ones to social adversity and discrimination, right? So what am I going to do? Should I completely disassociate myself from my roots and heritage of being a Muslim? Should I change the way I look and what I wear? Should I take off the hijab, something I have worn since I was 11 years old? Such a heavy, heavy conflict, and I don't even know if that's the right answer to it. Then I ask myself, what's going to make me happy? And I know that taking off the hijab isn't going to make me happy. The hijab has been part of my ancestral roots for many generations. It's part of my principles, honor, and identity as a Muslim woman. 
So I made a decision that I could be proud and courageous of my roots and heritage. And I made a decision that I'm going to continue wearing the hijab. It takes massive, massive courage to wear the hijab in America. But my happiness, principles, and identity are more important to me than the preconceived notion of society's checklist. So rather than hiding, being scared, and doubting myself, I decided that I'm going to put more of myself out there. So I volunteer in my children's classroom, I help out the teachers in field trips, I help out in the community, and the more confident and courageous I am with my roots and heritage, the more people start to accept me exactly the way I am. They start to see that even though I wear the hijab, that I'm just like them. I'm like you, someone who loves the community. I'm like you, a woman who's passionate about education. And I'm like you, a mother who loves the children and a devoted wife. Today, I'm the healthiest, happiest, most confident person that I've ever been while still wearing the hijab. <laughs> the revolution to overcoming social adversity isn't to blend, change, conform, or transform yourself to fit the preconceived notion of a scientist's checklist, but rather, to be proud and courageous of your roots and heritage. There is an invisible strength when you stay true to your principles, values, and identity. As I think about who this message is truly, truly for, I remember that little girl who found that bag of dog waste on our doorstep. So this message is for her, my daughter, Nadra. Nadra, when mommy wears the hijab, mommy feels happy, strong, and confident. And mommy feels that a part of me is honoring my identity and value as a Muslim woman. And it hasn't always been easy. But you, yeah, yeah. You are so strong, beautiful, and brave. And there are times when it's going to be challenging and a little bit hard. Just know that we're going to go through it together. So Adi, remember, be proud and courageous of your roots and heritage. Thank you.